Hello there, my name is Una and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now, when I was first thinking about filming this episode, I was thinking about a title. and I'm not quite sure whether it was going to be option one, be careful what you wish for. Option two, definitely be careful of what you plant. And third, how to remove invasive vines. So we're probably going to go somewhere between number two and number three. So let's get talking about it. Sometimes as gardeners, we can afford ourselves instant gratification. For instance, when we plant containers or we plant annuals or even succulents. But sometimes definitely patience is the best course of action, especially if you're talking about hedges and more especially if you're talking about vines and more more especially, especially if this fence is shared with a neighbour because your neighbour does not have to put up with your errors of judgment. Now, I don't know if you can see behind me, it goes right down there and it goes right up to the top of the garden. I have a very, very long section of chain link fence that separates my garden from my neighbour's garden. And in the category of be careful of what you wish for, all I can conclude is that the previous owners of this house wanted instant gratification with vines. So they didn't plant one or two varieties. Now wait for it, they planted six different varieties of vines on a single chain link fence. And that was probably somewhere around 1997 and we're now in 2020. So you can imagine what it's like now. After years of total neglect, it is rampant. In the category of be careful what you plant, as I said, I've got these six climbers. Now two of the climbers, okay, it's jasmine and it's a climbing rose. More or less controllable. But the other four is enough to make any gardener's hair stand up on end like a porcupine. I have got the other four. English ivy, trumpet vine, Virginia creeper and honeysuckle. Now the combination of one plus two plus three plus four plus five and plus six equals a blooming nightmare. Now in theory and indeed in practice, this side of the garden faces west. So it is, receives the sun as it comes here in the evening. However, the previous owners planted some shrubs and these shrubs have got bigger and bigger and they were totally overgrown with briars. So the actual hedge line or fence line was getting more and more and more into the shade. So what has happened is that the shade loving plant, which is the English ivy, is the one that's pushing through to my side of the fence, whereas all the other sun loving ones have pushed through to the neighbor side. Now I have taken over a meter in height from this hedge to get it close to where the chain link fence ends. I don't know if you can see it here. There's a pole here and the fence with all the sun loving vines are now pushing towards my neighbor side and are pulling away from the pole and in actual fact are pulling the fence down. So this needs to be dealt with right now. So hopefully you can see this now. So what I've done is shaved right back all the leaf growth as far as possible so I can see the structure of the vines themselves and as close as possible to the actual chain link itself. Now what that has done has exposed the base of all the vines. Now virtually every two and a half to three meters I've got a series of base plants like this. Now some of them are quite thin, like these ones, which I can do with a lopping shear, and some of them are quite thick like these ones. So the loppers is not going to hack it and I'm going to have to use an electrical prune saw. Getting rid of vines is a real, real pain. And even if you cut it back or even hack it back right to the base, they're going to grow back over and over and over again. So if you want to eliminate it or have a problem as bad as I have here, you have to take more drastic action. And although I'm totally against use of any type of chemicals, this is one of the few times that is absolutely and totally necessary. What I'm going to be using today is a stump killer. Now there are some considerations. First of all, it is toxic and very, very poisonous. Therefore, the only person in the garden should be the person who's applying it at that time. Everything else and everyone else should be in the house. So my dogs are going to go into the house in about five minutes before I start. And they're not going to come out again until the liquid I'm using is totally dry. And even then I'm going to give maybe an extra half an hour just to be on the safe side. The other thing to keep in mind is that a stump killer is time sensitive. What does that mean? In my case, I've got a very, very long chain link fence. Now, if I was going to be productive or more productive, one would think, OK, well, I'm going to go along with my saw and I'm going to go chop, 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 right up until the end. And then I'm going to start applying, 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 applying. I can't do that in this case because, as I said, this is time sensitive. From the time you make that first cut until the time you actually apply it, no more than 30 minutes must pass. And the least amount of time, the more effective it is. 
So what I'm going to be doing is taking each base as an individual unit over each clean cut with a paintbrush to make sure the poison doesn't go anywhere else. You paint the top of it until it's completely soaked and then go on to the next cut. It is very, very important that you only paint what you want to kill because if this drops onto any other plant, it's going to kill it. And very, very important as well, this is a stump killer. It is not a sucker killer or a sprout killer. If you try and cut a sprout off of a tree that you want to keep and you paint it with this, it's going to be absorbed into the root system of the entire tree or shrub and you're going to kill the entire tree or shrub. This is used to get rid of something you really don't want in extreme cases. In my case, a pernicious and invasive vine. These are the tools I'm going to be using today. Now for the cutting part, I've got my snips and my secateurs, I've got my lopping shears, and for larger branches, I've got the electrical pruning saw, with of course the corresponding oil to keep it lubricated. On the safety side, I've got a rubbish bag, which is important to put any contaminated things into. I've got waterproof gloves, it's important they're waterproof for the actual application. I've got safety goggles and I've got a little artist brush. You can either use this once and dispose of it when you're finished inside the rubbish bag. Do not, do not put it under water and clean it. Because if this gets into a water source, it's very, very highly contaminating. So the best thing to do is just let it dry, either dispose of it or let it dry and put it together with this for further uses. But don't use it on anything else. This has got a little safety cap that you have to push it down and twist to get it open. I'm just going to give it a little shake now. And I think we're just about ready to get started. So I'm going to get my, all my stuff over to the fence line and we'll get started. Now, as you can see, we've got all these freshly cut surfaces. So what I'm going to be doing now is dipping this paintbrush inside the stump killer and we're going to be painting over that flat surface of each one. So what I'm going to be doing now is hold it with one hand, paintbrush in the other, just dip it in and we're going to just be painting each individual one with a decent amount. even the small little tiny ones. giving some extra now to the, the thicker ones. Now, as soon as it leaves your hand, top gets put back on it so you don't kick it over accidentally and more than kill your plants, it could actually get into the water table underneath and this is extremely pernicious inside a water table. And I'm just going to be doing one of the thicker ones now. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention, this is rain resistant for 24 hours. So do keep an eye on the weather forecast. When you're going to apply this, make sure there's going to be no rain in the following 24 hours after application. And even better if it doesn't rain, say like today and indeed tomorrow. That would be absolutely perfect. So just keep an eye on the weather forecast before you do it. The other thing I need to mention is a timeline. Once I make a cut, well from where the cut upwards, the aerial part is going to die. Within 48 hours you're going to see that the leaves are getting dry and the aerial part of the plant is dying. However, the root part, this needs time to work its magic. It's not a question of 24 or 48 hours later, I'm in a hurry to lift the roots. No, you need to leave this four to six weeks to let the liquid do its magic. It's going to be sucked down into the root system and some of these vines, things like ivy in particular, have got such extensive root systems. This needs time to flow through those root systems and to kill those root systems. So give it time, don't be in such a rush. Right. 
safety goggles important. Look at that. Go through it like butter. These are thicker branches so they're going to need quite a generous amount to get them to soak in. But it's soaking in quite well actually. Nothing like a clean cut. Always remember safety first. It would be quite normal that this would be stained now with the actual stump killer. It might be wet on the outside. Now it is poison, so what you don't want to do, like as if it's a bacteria or a virus, is put your contaminated hand inside here to take off the glove. So you do exactly the same as if you're working with contaminated surgical gloves. Take hold of the palm side on one, pull your hand out, scrunch it up, and then with a the clean finger, put it on the inside, turn it round. So now you're holding the inside of the glove, which is not contaminated. And all you've got to do then, open the rubbish bin and throw it in. Done. I hope that this video has been of some help to you. Certainly the decision to use chemicals is not an easy one, certainly not for me. But in this particular case with invasive vines, there really isn't any other alternative out there on the market. And as I said before, if you hack it back, it just keeps on growing back. So my tip for the day, for the week, and indeed for the rest of your life is be careful what you plant, especially if you're talking about vines. And if you do plant a vine, and I'm certainly not against planting vines, I actually love vines, get a grip on it. Keep a grip on it before it gets a grip on you and on your trees and on your shrubs and starts to choke them all out. Now this video is going live on the 30th of October and of course the following day is the 31st of October, Halloween. So for all you Halloween maniacs out there, myself included, have a very, very wonderful day in family with lots and lots of tricks and treats. And for the rest of you and of course the Halloween treaters, I'll see you back here next Friday in Granny's Garden. Bye now.